Penn and Teller. world-famous magic show and a fancy Fool Us trophy to offer any magician who fools them. Our first magician just might take them up on that offer. Let's meet them. I'm Jeffrey Wong from Beijing, China. I've been doing magic since childhood. I perform all kinds of magic, but my specialty is coin magic. I didn't choose it. It chose me. When I invent tricks with other objects, I'd find out that someone else has already done that. But when I design a coin effect, it's easier for me to be original. I am one of the founders of the Magic Club at the University of Southern California. Going to school in Los Angeles has been great for my magic career, and it's close to Las Vegas. A few years ago, I met Penn Taylor and seemed amazing with the trick. Now it's time to try and fool them again in front of the world. Penn, Taylor, remember me? I'm back, and I've got something brand new. Jeffrey Wong. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Please nice to take meet a seat. You. Thank you. Too. Please take a seat. Okay, hello, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Wong. Super glad to be here. Uh, Brooke, yes. you ever seen a lot of magic trick? Yes. Okay, I have a question for you. Which side of the card box is the face of the card box? Uh, this one. This one? Yes. Why? Because the numbers are on that side. Uh, you know what? It's a very weird question. You know what? My card is very really easy to tell which side is the face because it has my face. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look closer. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so you like card trick? I do. Oh, sorry, I do coin trick only, so I do oh. coin trick for you, okay? Okay. Cool, like let's tricks. do a coin trick. Okay, I'll put this back. Cool, uh, your left hand face up. Thank you so much. Do me a favor. Uh, just hold on to the coin in my left hand, okay? Okay. Yes, in my left hand. This way. <laughs> hold on to it. Okay. Yes. Uh, you can see I have a marker right here. Yes. Do you know which side of the coin is the face of the coin? Heads. This one? I think so. Okay, okay try to initial on the face of the coin using okay. a marker in my left hand. <laughs> yeah, try to initial on it. Okay. Beautiful, and it showed the camera right there. Okay. I'm also gonna write my inertia on the back, like this. Okay. So we just mark this coin a very unique coin. So this is her signature, and this is my signature. Okay? Yep. Okay, now I don't need a Sharpie. Now, uh, still, I want you to hold out your left hand like this. I want to show you the moment I can transfer an object from one hand to the other. Okay? okay? I'm gonna toss a coin into your hand and I catch okay. it, okay? I'm gonna catch it. Yes, one, two, three. It travels to this side. And this is our signature, yes? Yes. You see it? I do. Our signature. I'll do the whole thing one more time, okay? This time I'll put it on the back of my hand. More difficult, okay? okay. Your hand, your hand, like this. One, two, three. Wow. Wow, what? Still goes to the left. Do you want to know how to do it? I do. Yeah? <laughs> I will show you because I can do that in two parts. Okay. The first part, I can put the coin into the hand like this. And uh, right here, I can put the coin into the air. Okay, it's right here. Okay, second part, second part. I can take the coin out from anywhere you want. Point to anywhere. Okay. Yeah, anywhere, point to. Here, right here. Right here, do you see the coin? It's gonna be a coin in my hand. Appears, um... Not yet. Okay, another point. Anywhere. Here! Okay, take it. There's gonna be a coin up here. Uh, uh, sorry, it's my first time in Fuwa, so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know where the coin goes. Oh. Uh, where is it? Do you see it? I don't see no? it. No? Where is it? Away. It's on... What? It's on your... Oh, on my back? Yeah. Right there? Oh, okay, let me take it, it off. It? Coin. Let me take off the tape for you, and this is our signed coin. Yes. It is, yes. Thank you. Okay. You know what? I made a little mistake. So let's try it one more time. 
Okay? Okay. Come closer, look at this. Do you see the coin? Yes. With the signature? Yes. I close my hand, I give it a wave. Whoa. Wow. It's gone. Where is it? I don't know. Have a guess. On your back? Did you see it? No. No? <laughs> so weird. Let's try something like this, okay? Okay. When I take off my jacket. Okay. Need help? Ooh. You can see right here. Oh, there's nothing. It's just right here. <laughs> okay, you know what? This is a coin, yes? Yes. Okay, uh, check it, show to the camera, and I will try a last thing for you, okay? This time, okay. I'm gonna stand on your right. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna have the coin? Yes, and yes. Take it, I'm standing on your right side, okay? Right here. Okay. Okay, do you see the coin? I do. You still see the coin? I do. Yes? Yes. And now, look what's in my left hand, right here. There's gonna be a <gasps> coin. Wait. With the signature, but this side oh. is all empty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you very much. Jeffrey Wong, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Wow. So, so up close and personal. Thank you. Does that make it more challenging for you? Oh, so close is not a big deal. It's like in front of so many audiences, it's, it's kind of nervous for me. You did great. We really enjoyed that, right, everyone? Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you, do you have any advice that you would share for aspiring young magicians? You yes, don't do magic. Don't do magic. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I think in my opinion, when I was very young, I see everything's magic. So I, I want people to get into magic later than six, seven years old. All right, it's time to go to Penn and Teller. Oh, really? We are ready. Are you ready? I'm not ready. Boy, okay. <laughs> we're ready. Okay. Oh, Jeffrey, you know, I want to just ask Brooke. Brooke, you got the best uh, experience of that of anybody. And I believe you saw real magic. Is that right? I believe I saw real magic, yep. Every moment of it was just perfect. I have no um, idea how we did that. The stuff you did was just beautiful. It's the best of that kind of stuff we have ever seen. When I say that kind of stuff, I got to backtrack a little bit. And people watch Fool Us for different reasons. Everybody just watches to see great magic. Some people, of course, tune in just to see Brooke. Uh, some people... Uh, <laughs> And some people tune in to try to figure out, uh, uh, I say certain things in code, they listen to the puns, and they try to go to the internet, and they search every word and every pun, and they go running down all these angles to try to find out how the trick was done. So I give them arrows to Toyland. I just tell them where to go to find that. And for those people who watched that incredible, magical moment between you and Brooke and want to go to the internet and search, I want to say to them, tough <laughs> I am not giving them a syllable. Uh, there's a technique that you do that I'm not going to do a pun about, I'm not going to give a hint about, but you do it as well as we've ever seen it done, better than we've ever seen it done, and it was fabulous, it was truly magical, they got to see you, they got to see Brooke, it was a wonderful moment, and you didn't fool us. Oh, you didn't fool them, but it sounds like they really loved that. Yeah. Jeffrey Wong, everyone. We gotta take a quick break and set the stage for our next fabulous magician. So stay close, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you're ready for more fantastic magic because we have some for you right now. Take a look. I live in two worlds. I was born in America and my magic is totally in the American style, but we went to live in India when I was eight years old and India is where I learned to dance. I was just 19 when I came on Fool Us for the first time. I didn't expect to fool Penn and Teller, I don't know how any magician can, but I had some good advice from a more experienced magician. He said, don't focus on the fooling. Make magic the goal and you win no matter how you do. And then I heard Penn say, We could not examine that deck, is that right? And then I said, Yeah, these are yours. I thought, this can't be happening. And my heart beat fast. And then I heard, uh, You fooled us. Unbelievable. 
Then the show aired and my social media exploded with people from India saying how much it meant to see someone who looked like them succeed. I'm still thinking about the magic, of course, but I can't help it. I'm also thinking about the trophy. The excitement of coming on this show, that's something that hasn't diminished at all. Hi, Teller. Thank you for inviting me on this season of Card Tank. <laughs> Today, I'm seeking a $10 investment for a 5% stake in my latest invention. Two cups and a string. <laughs> in Silicon Valley, they call this a string telephone. You whisper something on one side, it travels through the string, and you hear it on the other side. I know, it looks like a kindergarten science project, but I've brought the string phone into the digital age by making it wireless. <laughs> I'm gonna need a caller to test this out. Brooke, would you mind helping with this, please? I would Give love a huge to help you. Applause. How can I help you? Nice to meet you. you. Nice to have you, you back, of course. Brooke, this is gonna be your phone for today, so please hold on to this until the very end. Okay. I also have a deck of 52 different cards. For our demo, it's gonna be like 52 different messages we can send, yeah? Okay. Brooke, could you please touch the back of any card that you'd like? This one. I want you to look at it, but make sure none of us see it, yeah? Keep it to yourself. Let me know once you got it. I've got it. In a moment, Brooke is gonna whisper the name of her card into her cup, and whatever she says, I'm gonna hear it in mine. But before that, we need test conditions. So as Brooke is whispering from the audience, I'm gonna need some background noise, some static, okay? Brooke, get ready. I'm ready. Audience static, please. Did you hear me? Signal's a little weak in here, but uh, Brooke, I heard the ace, eight of clubs. Was that it? Bingo. Show it to everyone, that is the eight of clubs. Number 10 teller, just $10. $9 for a 5% stake in these cups. And they come with even more features, even speech to text software. Mm. Let me show you. Brooke, one more time. Could you okay. please touch the back of any card that you of like? Should I take that it? That one? Yes, yeah, same as before. I want okay. you to look at it, but make sure no one else sees it. You got it? Got it. Yeah. Audience static, please. Get ready to whisper. Okay. Can you go one more time? <laughs> Brooke, what card did you whisper? Eight of spades. The eight of spades? Yes, sir. <laughs> the reason I couldn't hear Brooke is because my cup converted her speech into text. Which is why now printed inside my cup is exactly the eight of spades. What? <laughs> okay. But Brooke, Penn Teller, I dreamt even bigger. I dreamt of a whole network of these cups around the world. I dreamt of integrating these with the smartphones, the voice assistants we already have, which is why these cups come with Bluetooth technology. Amazing. Paired, one final time. One final time, okay. Brooke, could you please touch the back of any card you like? This one, same as before, you see it, but keep it a secret. Audience, one final time. Brooke, you know what to do. Think about this, think about this. Brooke, you could have picked any one of these cards and she just whispered it, right? It's impossible for any of us to know what card Brooke said. But with these cups, anything is possible. Google, what card did Brooke say? Two of spades. Two of spades, oh was that gosh. it? Amazing. That's the two of spades. That's the string card. Thank you. <laughs> Incredible. Sanji Vinod, come on over here. Let's chat. That was 
fascinating. Thank you. I appreciate wow. it. Wow, how did you come up with a concept like this? How did I come up with this? Yes. I think a lot of magic begins with just a silly idea. You know, mm -hmm. it pops in your head, you think, what if? And I think for me, something I've struggled with a lot before is, right after you get that what if, you start thinking, oh, these are the things I know exist. These mm -hmm. are the things I know I could already do. This is the stuff that's possible. But luckily with this one, I had the help from some really smart friends and they reminded me that, you know, just take that seed of the idea, the purest form in your head, run with it. Do you have a philosophy about magic? I, I'm a kid. <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of I'm it, right? I'm just starting out. I think magic's very special in the sense that the older we all grow, we become more and more sure of how the world works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get very certain, but magic can challenge even, you know, even the oldest person to just rethink, oh, maybe, maybe there's something I don't know. All right, Sanjeev, let's see if your potential investors have figured out your trick. All right, here we go, boys. <laughs> Sajid, welcome back. I don't know about your two cups, but we sure want to invest in you. That's a, that's a great performance and a great idea for a trick. And uh, I love paper cups with strings. That's one of my favorite magic things to think about. You've done a wonderful job of doing some really, really, really nice. Uses some old technology and some very new technology. Your premise of wanting people to invest in your invention of the, uh, of the two cups, there's actually things you're using to accomplish that, that I, uh, I, if you did it yourself, which I think you did, you can probably sell that great technology to magicians, because it's a really, really good system and seems to work really well. And you don't need marks in the audience like they have on Shark Tank to say that, because you've got it all up there on stage. You just, all of it just really worked. It was really funny, really great, really, really good magic, but we do not think you fooled us. I think we snuck a few little words in there, didn't we, here and there? I think you did, yes. for sure. It <laughs> seems that they really loved your act, but you didn't fool them. Yes, that sounds about right. But seven dollars, six dollars. We'll talk. Don't, don't, we'll talk. don't lower it. You're worth it. You're so worth it. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Sanjeev, bingo, everyone. So far, we've seen some amazing magic, and we don't plan on stopping. The Conjuring continues when Fool Us returns. Welcome back, everyone. Taking center stage to face P&T is our next magician. Take a look. Mi nombre es Mirabel, que significa mira esto. Soy aprendiz de brujo. Quiero decir que empecé hace 20 años como asistente de un mago. Afortunadamente, aprendí de un gran mago, Jandro, quien les ha engañado a Penny Teller cinco veces. Aprendí mucho trabajando con él, pero como el aprendiz de cuento de hadas, quería crear mi propia magia. Yo diseño todas mis rutinas y cada una es única. Por esta razón, tengo mucha confianza en poder engañar a Penny Teller esta noche. Sin embargo, ¿sabes lo que más me asusta? Volar. Venir de España a Las Vegas fue una de las cosas más aterradoras que he hecho. Si pudiera elegir un poder mágico, sería viajar a lugares sin tener que volar hasta allí. Snap, y estoy en París. Snap, y estoy en Las Vegas. Oh, disculpe, tengo que ir al escenario. Vamos a ver si esto funciona. Snap. You think that everything is in order, in harmony, and in balance. But in the blink of an eye, chaos appears. Albert Einstein said, God does not play dice with the universe. But what happens when magic plays with the dice?
What do you think is more challenging, um, up close magic like this or big magic? ¿Cuál es más difícil, la magia de, uh, de cerca o de? de... Eh, bueno, cada una tiene su misterio, pero la magia de cerca es muy complicada. How does he choose which, yeah, which trick that he's going to perform for them, considering they've seen so much? O sea, que han visto muchos dados, quiere decir, muchos efectos parecidos. Pues no sé, yo creo que les habrá sorprendido. Are there many techniques in your dice routine that are totally original? Sí, claro, muy original. Y eh, no hay mucha cosa con dados y yo creo que es aparte de complicado original. Okay, Miraver, let's see if your trick rattled Penn and Teller or if they figured it out. Listo? Okay, boys. Miraver, uh, uh, I got to tell you. A lot of times on this show, uh, more times than I'd like to admit, Teller likes the axe more than I do. Teller likes certain kinds of niggly things that I don't like <laughs> one bit. But I like the stuff that has juggling in it, and I love dice stacking. I just love dice stacking. And uh, I was over in Spain recently with my dear friend Hondro. He said, well, there's this guy in Valencia that you got to see. He's the best at dice stacking. And that's as far as we got. He never said the name. He never said anything. But I now know that my dear friend Hondro was talking about you because he knew I had to see you and I had to see you. Now, the juggling parts of dice stacking, I just adore. And if you just do, did the juggling parts of dice stacking, I probably couldn't in good conscience say that was great, great magic. But you have that slide behind the cup where the, it changes colors. You have the stack that appears. Uh, we know some dice stacking. We know some dice stacking. I've played with it, but you have all sorts of stuff we don't know. So I am thrilled out of my mind to say that you did dice stacking and you fooled us. <laughs> Welcomed into the world, 
Penn & Teller takes some deep breaths because it's back to work when Fool Us returns. <laughs> party poppin' and bring out our next act. Magic can bring happiness. I know because it brought happiness to me. I have autism and social anxieties. I was in special education and because I loved magic, they let me focus on that. Magic really helped me get out of staying at home in my safe little world where nothing can hurt me. Because magic helped me practice my social skills, I now have social skills. I loved comedy and I worked it into my act. Humor helped me adjust with other people. I knew my social role was to amuse people. For me, laughter is the sound of acceptance. When I go out on stage tonight, I will stand in front of a room full of people and try to make them laugh. And if Penn & Teller laugh too, that will already feel like my trophy. and Morton Christensen. Hello. Um. I now realize this joke only works in Danish. <laughs> Hello, my name is Morten. I'm from Denmark. I'm a magician. Woo! Yeah, no, just no. No. You can tell I'm a magician because that is what the show is about. And also, you can clearly tell I have no friends. So, uh, so, and, and maybe you're wondering, can you make a living off being a magician if you're not Penn and Teller? And no. Uh, okay. But I have a trick, I have a trick. It's not really a magic trick, but it's a trick. It's sort of like voodoo. I'll show you, I'll show you. Watch, I have here, I have made some drawings. Uh, I've made some drawings here. Uh, so let um, me just see, you know, show you these. These, uh, these are ducks. <laughs> Still not funny? Okay, there's, there's, there's more. So this is here, it's, a, it's a, a drawing I'm working on. It's a drawing of me. We'll just finish it. Um, it's not that good. I usually only draw ducks. So, so, well, I'll do my best. Just like this. Okay, so this... Whoops. <clears throat> this is me. Look, we're the same. He has a hat and a face. I have a hat and a face. He has a smile. We're now the same, so if I do this, then I feel it. It's, the reason why I do this is so I can feel how it is to have a connection with another person. Got too real? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we're now the same, so if I do this, I have here a lighter. So if I do, uh, no, if I do this, Just to be clear, this does not hurt me. It hurts the drawing. <laughs> but I feel what the drawing feels. It's complicated. Uh, I'll do this, I'll do this. I have here a fist. I will now hit myself in the face. Just for you guys. Th thank you. <laughs> the guy from Denmark is gonna hit himself in the face? Oh, I'm glad I came. Uh, <laughs> I'm now gonna hit myself in the face. <clears throat> It is in moments like this where I really feel like I should have gotten an education. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> Ugh. 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 Oh, my hat, where's my, oh, my hat. Ugh. 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 Oh, am I bleeding? Oh, I'm, oh. Ugh. Ugh. 
Oh, this is, uh, this, oh, this is too much. It's, ugh. Oh, let's do this. You can, you can have this as a souvenir. I will sign it like this. Here you go. Souvenir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I signed it on the face. I hope that's okay. Uh, and one more thing before I go, okay? Ducks. <laughs> See, it works. I'm gonna go back to Denmark now. Thank you. Martin Christensen, let's give him a big hand, everyone. Hey, Martin. Hello. How different is magic culturally in Denmark? Are you sure you don't want to No, it's so good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's not it's not my blood. Is it oh mm. how, <laughs> how <laughs> did you ever imagine that you would make it to this stage? Uh no, not really, because I sent an email to Fool Us five years ago. Didn't hear back. <laughs> and then I became the world champion of magic last year, and they are calling back. <laughs> What is your process like in deciding what magic you're going to perform? It needs to be fun or violent, clearly. I'm really funny in Danish. You should eat. You want to hear it? Okay. We have it. Do we have time? Sure. A Danish joke. Okay. So that you took gulfisk and you sit in the and so says one has got a warm, and so says the other piss. I said it was a Danish joke. Come on. Okay, Morton, are you ready? Because it is time. Let's find out if you have fooled Penn and Teller. Sir, how are things in Denmark? The weather is better than here. This is horrible. Yeah, it's, it's, a, little <laughs> <laughs> it's a little... It's a little warm. Yeah. I said when you finished, I said I really liked that act, and Teller said, I love him. So Teller one-up me right Thank there. Thank you so much. And, you know, the slapstick, we just love that, like Jerry Lewis. We used to work with Martin Lewis, you know, Martin and Lewis yeah, with, yeah, with the I, team I there. Heard of that guy. It, it was very good. And we just say, uh, what we want to mostly say about your act is it was really three ducks, which, which is a pun that only works in Norwegian. Have you changed your name to do it? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's now pen with two ends, which it was not until oh, today. Oh, that is so funny, you don't even know why. Okay. <laughs> it makes no sense. But it's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what are you saying? Get to the point. Come on. We, we just love, love, love you, but we don't think you fooled us. Okay, but I think I didn't fool them, but I think it's because they didn't get the duck joke. So it's really their fault. It's really their fault. It's our fault. So. We, take full, we take full blame. Well, Morton, you didn't fool them, but you got all the love, and we love you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Morton Christensen, everyone. Well, we have one last trick up our sleeve, and we're going to take it out of our sleeve, and we're going to hand it over to Penn and Teller to perform when Fool Us returns. Hi. Welcome back to Fool Us. So people say, not me, but people say Teller does all the hard work, and Penn's only remotely working. Well, for tonight's final trick, we've got Teller on stage and Penn working remotely. Guys, take it away. Good evening. My name is Penn Gillette. This is my partner, Teller. We are Penn and Teller. We got two people from the audience. Uh, we got a man who can get a ring off his finger. What is your name, our newest friend? Pat. Hello, Pat, and someone who likes flowers. What is your name, please? Nicole. We have Pat and Nicole. Now, Pat, you have a ring, right? Now, I always wear a ring, too. This is called a carny ring. Every carny performer wears a ring that when he dies can be pawned and used to pay for his burial. So that's my <laughs> ring right there that I always wear. Now, tell her, you got your ring off your finger there? Yes. And uh, here's the most important part. This whole trick is based on you being able to recognize your ring when you see it again. Will you recognize that ring, Pat? Yes, sir, I will. Are you positive? I am positive. Good. Now, we have a flower. Want to make sure this is a real rose. It has to be a real rose. Give that a whiff. Is that a real rose, Pat? That's a real rose. And uh, Nicole, is that a real rose? Give it a whiff. Give it a whiff. Mm-hmm. And tell her, give that a whiff on me. Take a whiff on me. There we go. And uh, give me a whiff. 
Oh man, that stinks pretty. That's really nice. Now, would you please hold firmly both ends of the rows. Pat, you hold one end. Nicole, you hold another right there. This is a classic trick of magic. Goes back hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Nicole, are you all set there? Here we go. And one, two, three. What do you see on that rose, Nicole? What do you see on that rose? I see the ring. Nicole, what's on the rose? The golden ring. Yes, it's a ring, Nicole, on a real, no kidding, rose. But the most important part of this is Pat. Pat, is that your ring on a real rose? Yes, it is. Are you sure it's your ring? I am positive. Say, I, Pat, swear that's my ring. I, Pat, swear that's my ring. Say, if that's not my ring, I will happily spend eternity in hell doing nude lap dances for Nixon and you promise that? I promise. That's your ring, no doubt about it. Thank you so much, Nicole. You can take the flower. Please give the ring to Pat, and you can go back to your seat right there. Thank you so much, Nicole. Oh. Give the ring to Pat, and you can go right back to your seat. What, what are you doing, Pat? This isn't my ring. What did you say? This isn't my ring. That's not your ring? No, it's not. Pat, am I high on LSD? Because I thought you said clearly that was your ring, that you swore it was your ring. Do you want to do nude lap dances in hell for and Dixon? Is that your ring? It's not my ring. Hold it up to me. Let me see it. Wait a minute. That, that's my ring. So what's, what's on my finger? It doesn't even fit over my whole finger. Because you're, that's, that's your <laughs> ring. I get, I'm in the back of the theater and I've got Pat's ring. I've got Pat, you can see, it wouldn't even fit on my finger. So not only is Pat a liar, he's also a ring thief. I want my ring, Pat. Here is your ring. Let me take mine. Here's your ring. And Pat, is that your ring? That is my ring. Do you swear it's your ring, Pat? I swear this is and my ring. And that's my ring, and I swear it is. Thank you so much, Thank Pat. You Thank you so that's Pat. That's my ring. I got my Carney ring right here. It is a nice ring. That's all the miracles that we have for tonight, but we'll have plenty more when you join us next time on Fool Us. Good night, everyone. It is in moments like this where I really feel like I should have gotten an education. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> Ugh. 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 Oh, my hat, where's my... <laughs> It's not, it's not my blood. Is it? Oh. Mm. How, <laughs> how? Did you ever imagine that you would make it to this stage? Uh, no, not really, because I sent an email to Fool Us five years ago. Didn't hear back. <laughs> and then I became the world champion of magic last year, and they are calling back. <laughs> What is your process like in deciding what magic you're going to perform? It needs to be fun, 
or violent, clearly. I'm really funny in Danish. You should... You don't want to hear it? Okay. We have it. Do we have time? Sure. A Danish joke. Okay. Så der er de to guldfisk, og de sidder i et akvarie. Og så siger den ene, har godt nok varmt, og så siger den anden, pis. <laughs> I said it was a Danish joke. Come on. Okay, Morten, are you ready? Because it is time. Let's find out if you have fooled Penn and Teller. Sir, how are things in Denmark? The weather is better than here. This is horrible. Yeah, it's, it's, a, little <laughs> it's a little... It's a little warm. Yeah. I said when you finished, I said I really liked that act, and Teller said, I love him. So Teller one-up me right Thank there. Thank you so much. And, you know, the slapstick, we just love that, like Jerry Lewis. We used to work with Martin Lewis, you know, Martin and Lewis yeah, with, yeah, with the I, team I there. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that guy. It, it was very good, and we just say, uh, what we want to mostly say about your act is it was really three ducks, which, which is a pun that only works in Norwegian. Have you changed your name to do it? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's now pen with two ends, which it was not until oh, today. Oh, that is so funny. You don't even know why. Okay. <laughs> it makes no sense. But it's really <laughs> funny. Uh, so uh, what are you saying? Get to the point. Come on. We, we just love, love, love you, but. We don't think you fooled us. Okay, but I think I didn't fool them, but I think it's because they didn't get the duck joke. So it's really their fault. It's really their fault. It's our fault. So. We, take full, we take full blame. Well, Morton, you didn't fool them, but you got all the love, and we love you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Morton Christensen, everyone. Well, we have one last trick up our sleeve, and we're going to take it out of our sleeve, and we're going to hand it over to Penn and Teller to perform when Fool Us returns. Teller does all the hard work, and Penn's only remotely working. Well, for tonight's final trick, we've got Teller on stage and Penn working remotely. Guys, take it away. Good evening. My name is Penn Gillette. This is my partner, Teller. We are Penn and Teller. We got two people from the audience. Uh, we got a man who can get a ring off his finger. What is your name, our newest friend? Pat. Hello, Pat, and someone who likes flowers. What is your name, please? Nicole. We have Pat and Nicole. Now, Pat, you have a ring, right? Now, I always wear a ring, too. This is called a carny ring. Every carny performer wears a ring that when he dies can be pawned and used to pay for his burial. So that's my <laughs> ring right there that I always wear. Now, tell her, you got your ring off your finger there? Yes. And uh, here's the most important part. This whole trick is based on you being able to recognize your ring when you see it again. Will you recognize that ring, Pat? Yes, sir, I will. Are you positive? I am positive. Good. Now, we have a flower. Want to make sure this is a real rose. It has to be a real rose. Give that a whiff. Is that a real rose, Pat? That's a real rose. And uh, Nicole, is that a real rose? Give it a whiff. Give it a whiff. Mm-hmm. And tell her, give that a whiff on me. Take a whiff on me. There we go. And uh, give me a whiff. Oh, man, that stinks pretty. That's really nice. Now, would you please hold firmly both ends of the rose? Pat, you hold one end. Nicole, you hold another right there. This is a classic trick of magic. Goes back hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Nicole, are you all set there? Here we go. And one, two, three. What do you see on that rose, Nicole? What do you see on that rose? I see the ring. Nicole, what's on the rose? The golden ring. Yes, it's a ring, Nicole, on a real no kidding rose. But the most important part of this is Pat. Pat, is that your ring on a real rose? Yes, it is. Are you sure it's your ring? I am positive. Say, I, Pat, swear that's my ring. I, Pat, swear that's my ring. Say, if that's not my ring, I will happily spend eternity in hell doing nude lap dances for Nixon and <laughs> You promise that? I promise. That's your ring, no doubt about it. Thank you so much, Nicole. You can take the flower. Please give the ring to Pat, and you can go back to your seat right there. Thank you so much, Nicole. Give the ring to Pat, and you can go right back to your seat. What, what are you doing, Pat? This isn't my ring. What, what'd you say? This isn't my ring. That's not your ring? No, it's not. Pat, 
Am I high on LSD? Because I thought you said clearly that was your ring, that you swore it was your ring. Do you want to do nude lap dances in hell for and Dixon? Is that your ring? It's not my ring. Hold it up to me. Let me see it. Wait a minute. That, that's my ring. So what's, what's on my finger? It doesn't even fit over my whole finger. Because you're, that's, that's your <laughs> ring. I get, I'm in the back of the theater and I've got Pat's ring. I've got Pat. You can see it wouldn't even fit on my finger. So not only is Pat a liar, he's also a ring thief. I want my ring, Pat. Here is your ring. Let me take mine. Here's your ring. And Pat, is that your ring? That is my ring. Do you swear it's your ring, Pat? I swear this is and my ring. And that's my ring, and I swear it is. Thank you so much, Thank Pat. You very much. Much. That's Pat. That's my ring. I got my carny ring right here. It is a nice ring. That's all the miracles that we have for tonight, but we'll have plenty more when you join us next time on Fool Us. Good night, everyone. Am I?